Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to take a very quick look at using different voltages in an FPV system. Occasionally, you'll find that some of the cameras out there will need 12 volts, some will need 5 volts. A lot of the FPV transmitters will only supply 5 volts for the camera. So in that case, how do you get it to work with a 12 volt camera rather than a 5 volt one? Sometimes this can be really confusing, particularly when you're new to FPV. Some of the things that we're going to cover in this video are covered in far more detail in the videos in the Introduction to RC playlist on our YouTube channel. So if any of this that we're talking about doesn't quite make sense, go and have a look at those other videos. It should be covered in a little bit more detail. In front of us here, we have a Fat Shark transmitter. This is a 25 milliwatt one, and it provides 5 volts out to run the camera. And the cameras that I use here tend to all run on 5 volts, whether it's a little button camera, whether it's a board camera, the Fat Shark, uh, TVL line cameras, and even things like the Mobius and the 80816 cameras all run on 5 volts. So I don't tend to come across this problem a lot. But what you'll find is some of the higher end cameras and the ones that use CCD technology rely on 12 volts. Let's very quickly talk about what that means. So a lot of the 5 volt cameras you'll find will be CMOS or metal oxide semiconductor style. And they're the ones that can be a little bit more susceptible to the kind of jello effect if there's any vibration on the craft. And they're not quite as high performance, although the latest generation is starting to get to CCD like quality. CCD, charge couple devices, is the way that the sensor works and it's a lot faster and it allows for a much higher quality and better light management than the CMOS versions. But they do require 12 volts to run. So this is sometimes why you'll find this is the case. A lot of FPVers will swear by CCD devices and not use CMOS cameras, so they're always using 12 volts. Now it doesn't always relate that if you're using a CCD camera it'll be 12 volts and vice versa but that's pretty much the rule of thumb. So let's first of all look at how you connect a standard system using a good old 5 volt camera with a 5 volt out video transmitter like we have on the bench. So here we have our LiPo battery on the left hand side. Typically that's usually going to be between 2 and 6S. That's about 7.2 to about 22.2 volts. Most FPV transmitters will kind of manage uh, batteries in that range. And then it has two jobs, one of which is to obviously transmit the video signal back down to the goggles or ground station and also to provide a nice clean power supply for the camera. The Fat Shark systems like I use here and a lot of others that I'm using on the channel actually use a nice 5 volt system. So they provide the 5 volts out the side along with trying to listen for the video signal and you just plug the 5 volts and ground into the back of your 5 volt camera and you're great. But what about if you have that 12 volt camera? How do you wire it up? Because you don't have that 5 volts that you can use. You have to get 12 volts from somewhere. So let's talk about that. The first option is to actually use something like a 3S LiPo battery. So these are the ones that typically run from maximum charge of about 12.4 volts down in use to a minimum of about 10.5 volts. Those kind of voltage ranges will usually run an FPV camera without too much trouble. So one of the options for a quick and dirty way to do it is just to plug the two power wires from the back of your 12 volt camera into the LiPo battery or the balance tap or even take a jumper off the power distribution board that's at the bottom of the quadcopter. Interestingly, you just still connect the video cable. You don't have to worry about that. The actual voltage amplitude of the signal that's coming out of the camera is going to be the same whether or not it's kind of 12 or 5 volts. So typically we don't have to worry about that. We just plug the video cable in and we plug in the plus 12 volts on the ground back to the 3S LiPo battery. Again, through either the balance tap directly into the LiPo battery connector itself or more commonly pulling it out of the power distribution board. That's okay if you're using a 3S LiPo battery because that's pretty much around the voltages the camera will be happy with. But what you'll find is that you can be using bigger batteries on the bigger machines. So very common now uh, using 4S LiPo batteries on the smaller quads or 6S LiPos on the big hexacopters is quite common. And that will give us 22 volts. And that's obviously far too much for us to directly connect our camera to. So what are our options here? Well, there's a couple. 
First option is to use something called a 12 volt battery eliminator circuit. Now we've seen these on the channel already. If you've watched other videos, you might have come across them. We tend to come across the five volt versions very often because five volts is what we use to run things like flight controllers. But you can also get 12 volt versions too. And just like we use with other battery eliminator circuits, what you do is you plug one side into the 22 volts. So again, you'd probably take a jump off the onboard power distribution board. And then from the other side comes a beautifully smooth, clean 12 volt supply that you can plug into your FPV camera. This is a nice way to do it. And some people do this even if it's a 3S battery, just because it provides a much cleaner power to the camera. Challenge with using a 3S battery is as the battery voltage rises and falls, as the throttle's been changed, some cameras will be sensitive to that and you'll have a problem. So having a battery eliminator circuit in the middle just kind of smooths that all out. Sometimes you have to be a little bit careful. Occasionally you'll find FPV transmitters that don't just like to have the video signal plugged in if there's no ground, and you'll have to plug in an, another little ground cable and just make a connection between the ground from the back of the camera and the ground on the video inside of the FPV transmitter. I found that I can pretty much get away with this 99% of the time, but if you're having weird effects and distortion and the camera isn't working very well, this is probably the next thing I'd try as part of your troubleshooting. The other option then, we can actually use something called a step-up converter. And what that does, it takes five volts in and then put 12 volts out. And typically these things can run between one to 1.2, 1.5 amps out, which is more than enough for a little FPV camera. So this is the way that I would probably do it because it's quite neat and it doesn't involve lots of additional wiring. So what you do is you plug one side of your 12 volt step-up module to the five volts out of the video transmitter and then out the other side comes again a nice clean stable 12 volt power supply that can go into the back of your camera. This is a nice way because what it does is pretty much guarantee that there's a good stable level 12 volt supply that's going into the camera at all times and the boards are really small they're kind of a size of your thumbnail and uh, with a little bit of uh, cabling, you can pop these guys in pretty easily. They're also relatively inexpensive, so uh, you don't have to break the bank if you want to do it this way as well. Last thing to talk about then is how do you put an on-screen display in a system like this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. What you need to do is just put that on-screen display just like we've seen in loads of videos on the channel. If you look and search for Minim OSD Painless 360, you'll find them. Um, this, so this is the kind of OSD that we tend to use here on the channel itself. What you do is you plug the video inside of your OSD to the camera and the video out into the video in onto the FPV transmitter and that will work fine. So hopefully in that seven or eight minutes, what we've done is we've talked about all the different options that we have to power and use 12 volt cameras with five volt FPV systems. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.